Night at 10.35 right now on BBC One. Are you feeling sporty? A magnificent setting, two great teams. What drama here. footballing legend who had an incredible England career, scoring 44 goals in 57 internationals. Yet when he started his career at Chelsea, he was on just £8 a week, or in today's money, 22 rubles. Jimmy Green! <laughs> the weird Phil and Jonathan this week is Britain's top 400 metre runner, who says that the person he most admires is fellow athlete Michael Johnson. Quite an accolade, considering he's only ever seen him from behind. You and Thomas! We start the show with a footballing excuse. David, Rory and Jimmy, watch this. Here's the world's costliest defender, Rio Ferdinand, giving his all for England in last April's Euro qualifier victory over Turkey. But of course, in the last few days, things haven't gone quite so smoothly for the £30 million man. And he was dropped from Saturday's decider against Turkey for missing a routine drugs test. So what exactly was Rio's excuse for not taking the test, David Steen, and I need all of them. Uh, the bottle wasn't big enough. <laughs> <laughs> it was only two litres. <laughs> I'll tell you what we used to take, actually, and, and it, it was past illegal many years ago, was that amyl nitrate. You oh, know? The <laughs> performance enhancing <laughs> you know they used to um, it used to come in a little file didn't it and you'd break it and some of the lads they're called sniff it they're called poppers now yeah. that's it poppers and very and they'd sniff it i'll tell you what you'd make sure you were last out of the dressing room <laughs> Jimmy, popularly, it's, it's thought that you, know, you were left out of the um, 1966 world cup winning side and as a result of that you just left the game um, that day and and hit the bottle and I didn't hit the bottle straight away. I mean, it was the 70s. Same sort of time as George. And we're thinking of doing a book on our drinking experiences, you know. Really? So if anyone can tell us where we were in the 70s. <laughs> you have to give um, your samples or anything like that, Jimmy, when you were playing? No, we didn't. Because uh, your year would really fantastic, wouldn't it? Yeah. yeah. 61 was a particularly good year, I think. <laughs> No, we didn't have any drug tests. It's amazing, that. Well, the thing is, you you don't really need a test to see that somebody's on amyl nitrate. <laughs> <laughs> you must have had random drug tests. I mean, well, what, you, what, what, you what's the procedure done. when it happens? The procedure is you're training. All the people that are training get put into a hat, just what it, pick three out, and then that's it. And then you're followed. Wherever you go, you are followed. And I mean, wherever you go. All you, the people you, who are training get put into a hat. <laughs> <laughs> Come on then, Rio Ferdinand. Well, he, he was, his, it was moving, wasn't he? He was moving house. I read somewhere it's not going to happen again because they're going to put little post-its with do not forget your drug test, Rio, on the breast of every blonde girl in Manchester. <laughs> <laughs> he was moving. Moving house is part of it, He was yeah. moving house. He went shopping. He went off. shopping, didn't he? Stuff. I need a little bit more. Oh, didn't he didn't oh, say he had um, a recurring kidney infection. He did have a recurring well, kidney done. infection. And, of course, he forgot. So I think you've got all the answers out. I'll give you three well, points. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently Rio Ferdinand neglected to take the test because his mind was on moving house, although he was seen in Manchester City Centre later that afternoon, presumably moving his furniture into Harvey Nichols. <laughs> well, that was what was said at first. A leak later to the press suggested he forgot because he was suffering from a kidney infection and was worrying about it. Apparently they couldn't get in contact with him because his mobile phone was switched off. So let's have a look at that photo again. And there is the famous uh, switched off phone held by the switched off footballer. <laughs> At the Turkey game, a massive security operation ensured there was no trouble. In fact, the only incident was when the window of a Turkish bar near the ground was smashed. 
by David Beckham's penalty. <laughs> I saw the papers the next day. Couldn't believe what Beckham said. He's uh, complaining. He poked me. He was wooed about my mum. <laughs> That's what you come home from nursery school saying. <laughs> Now, we're well aware, seriously, on this show that we shouldn't criticise unless we've been seen to be whiter than white ourselves. So, before the show, we asked the teams all to give a urine sample. Uh, five of them were fine and, and looked like this. Uh, but the one that was marked Tufnell um, <laughs> sadly came back looking like this. One or two questions that need answering there, Phil. I don't know. I'd had a lot of Ribena that week. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Phil, Jonathan, and Ewan, it's a sporting spat for you. Here's tousled haired Welsh wind em up merchant Robbie Savage ruling the roost for Birmingham City. And here's the delightful town of Wrexham, home to the largest hospital in North Wales and many other fine civic amenities. <laughs> but what has Robbie done to upset some of the good people of Wrexham, Bill's team? Yeah. It is lovely to have you in on the show. I'm just going to point out, now you're doing all right for yourself, you don't have to let your mum still cut your hair. Oh. You know, there are professionals you can go to. Well, it looks like it's been put on backwards. Yeah. We should go together, yeah. isn't it? But on the other hand, I would let your dad still rewire plugs for you. <laughs> uh, uh, no, who's this fellow, Robbie oh, Savage? He? Yeah. He's the, I've heard he's a, he's a, bit, he's a bit chippy. He's a chi he's chippy. But he's a big, proud Welsh boy, isn't he? He's got a bit of a girly haircut, but... <laughs> you and Robbie and David Ginola get together and swap hair care tips. <laughs> you can come along too, by the way. <laughs> Robbie Savage. Has he upset some of the people of Wrexham he's by saying they're all stupid no, or smelly? No, no, or no, 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 far well. from it, far from it. He, he has friends in Wrexham. Did he play against them for Birmingham or something? Nope. No. Uh, was he caught, um, was he caught having... Uh, uh, no. <laughs> I don't think we've got too much idea, mate. You give them a question based on the oh, no. one big football event of the weekend, I'm which everyone say. knows about, even I bloody know about that. You give us something about some twat with too much hair playing in the <laughs> Who cares? It's unfair. And you poked me and said my mum was fat. <laughs> I've got to say, which she is. Seriously, we don't know ourselves. I don't know. I haven't got a clue. Jonathan's right. It is very difficult, actually. Yeah, I'm going to give you a bonus point for that, Phil's team, I think. They had all started with a penalty in Birmingham's first game of the season against Spurs. Savage won the penalty, but insisted teammate David Dunn take it. This annoyed his mates back in Wrexham, who'd taken odds of 14 to 1 that Robbie would score the first goal. Robbie Savage was once fined £10,000 for using the referee's toilet. Mind you, he had no choice. The player's toilet was full of footballers hiding from FA drug testing. <laughs> And at the end of that round, Phil's team have one point, and David's team have three. <laughs> we press on with the treble where the teams link three sports personalities with three objects. David's team, your subject for the treble is the treatment table. Here are your three. Tough tackling, penalty winning England talisman Stephen Gerrard. Barrier beating marathon ace Paula Radcliffe and speedy tight shirted England try machine Dan Luger. Now they've all been the recipients of unusual treatments for their ailments, but David's team, which one has been using emu oil? Who's been using a device favoured by Russian cosmonauts? And who's been told to avoid tomatoes at all costs? You must have avoided a few tomatoes in your time, David. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, you when they keep throwing them up. <laughs> Get on things that are about that big and they're flat and they, they grow on pizzas. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, it's changed since your day. I don't suppose they had these sort of alternative treatments in your day, did it? What sort of they treatment? just pop us. No. <laughs> there was no treatments. I mean, all I used to run on with was a little bladder freezing cold water and a sponge yes. and wherever you got injured they'd run on open the platter up pull the sponge out slap it on your bollock <laughs> <laughs> wherever you got injured wherever you got injured <laughs> the pain was so excruciating that you forgot where you were injured.
Jimmy, do you think they're too soft these days? Soft on the players generally and soft in the way they, they oh, approach easy, players? Dude. Oh, very much so, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Dear, Jimmy. yeah, I mean... <laughs> I mean, we had a man's game in our day. Oh, yeah, all of you together in the bath with a big bottle of Amyl Nitro. <laughs> It's a pubs game now, isn't it? It is it's a pubs game, isn't it? That's what we're coming to! That's what we're coming to! It's a pubs game, they probably, they probably take... Matt Trout, when he once played a game of football, broke his neck and yeah. carried on playing. <laughs> is, that right. brave, is that brave or stupid? No, <laughs> he's just trying to do, he hasn't looked back since, but... <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. Tomato with um, Steven Gerrard, Steven Gerrard, because he kept getting injured or something. He, kept, he had shin splints or something on his back and that, and he was told by a dietitian not to have tomatoes okay. because there's something actually, that's in um, there. That's who's, who's the bloke on the end? That Dan Luger. That's oh, Dan, Dan, Luger. Dan, Dan. He scored a try the other day, didn't what, he? Well, against Georgia. Against. We all scored a try against Georgia. <laughs> <laughs> I think he's got the, the cosmonautic device okay, that relaxes enough. the muscle. I think Go with that then. Oh. Having run behind Paula Ratcliffe in the Great North Run. How far been? behind? 13.1 miles, oh, actually. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there was a sp slight smell of <laughs> emu oh. oil. <laughs> three out of three. Yeah. Well done. Stephen Gerrard has been advised by two French orthopaedic experts not to eat tomatoes in order to help his chronic back problem. Paula Radcliffe smeared extract of emu cream on the wound she sustained when she ran into a teenage cyclist. Emu oil can be very dangerous. It's why Rod Hull slipped off his roof. <laughs> <laughs> and Dan Luger used a Skinar machine which speeds up healing and recovery using electrical impulses. The Skinar machine is powered by a tiny 9 volt battery like the one normally used to power Rio Ferdinand's tiny brain. <laughs> Dan Luger has sustained injuries to nearly every part of his body, pelvis, groin, hamstring, chest, neck and both knees. Mind you, that's what happens when you spill Martin Johnson's pint. <laughs> Doctors recently discovered that Steven Gerrard's back problems are all food related. In fact, the injury first occurred when he was on England duty and tried to lift up Wayne Rooney's KFC breakfast bucket. <laughs> Paula Radcliffe's emu oil is described as the second best kept secret in sport, apart from what it is that Tim Henman does for a living. <laughs> Phil, Jonathan and Ewan, your subject for the treble is sporting inspirations. Here's your trio. Dapper Welsh snooker wizard Mark Williams. Over-muscled Aussie world hurdles champion Jana Pittman. And because I'm worth it, big girl's blouse, David Ginola. <laughs> oh. But Phil's team, which one is inspired by Vinnie Jones? Who's motivated by having a fight? And who takes inspiration from bumblebees? Uh, I, know, I know that one. It's the bumblebees with Yana Pittman. Because I've seen... I've seen a tattoo on her stomach. Uh, have you? Oh. Well, no, I can't. My mate, he's secretly given her one and he's seen the honey pot. <laughs> Am I right in saying that your phrase was he's secretly given her one well, he was, and <laughs> he's seen the honey pot? Oh, reference to me, yeah. <laughs> this is when I run fast, mate. <laughs> have you got any tattoos? Uh, <coughs> yeah. What do you have? I have two. What are they? Uh, one's when I was young and went to Olympics. What does it say? No, it's just the Olympic it's rings the Olympic from back up. in the day. Oh, show me no. the Olympic rings! <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. And what, what's the other one? Um, the other one is one my parents didn't know about till now, but thanks a lot. Is uh, it's just oh, it's a little angel, well, a big angel. Well, uh, I think yeah. you're on the wrong show, you and I think you've confused this show with Trisha. <laughs> <laughs> you keep coming on and going, yeah. oh, I didn't well, really uh, say this. Yeah. I got stung by a wasp four times once when I was fielding for England. How stupid you have to be to be stung by a wasp four times. <laughs> you were actually playing at the time? Yeah, I was, and they kept flying up my trouser leg. Well, was it the same one or more than one? Uh, I don't know, I didn't ask his name. I bet it was the same one. <laughs> <laughs> so we've off. got to find out who's Bees is the bird. Bees yeah. is, the, is the, uh, the running bird. Mark Williams had a punch up, I think, when he was playing a game of cards with his mate in the World Championship or something. Do you think Vinnie Jones inspired Jinnola? Vinnie Jones yeah. has inspired me many times. 
to walk out of cinemas when these bloody awful films are showing. <laughs> Just a joke, Vinny. And, uh... Bill made me say it, Vinny. <laughs> He wants to go into acting, doesn't he? He's been doing it all his career, diving and stuff. Jeune Alain is inspired by Mr. Sir, hopefully, Vinnie Jones. Um, <laughs> and the lady one is inspired Bumble by the bumblebee. Bee. And the bloke with the silly hat on is inspired by Gurney. fighting people. It's correct for three points. Well, 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 well. In fact, world snooker champion Mark Williams was spurned on to the title after having a punch-up with his best mate Sarji in the dressing room during the half-time interval of the final. Presumably Sarji wanted to turn the bloody snooker off. <laughs> Jana Pittman claims she gets inspiration from the bumblebee tattoo on her midriff. And David Ginola claims he was inspired to act by watching Vinnie Jones. Vinnie Jones was inspired to act by not being paid to play football anymore. <laughs> In between matches, Mark Williams relaxes by playing bingo, so it's not just Ronnie O'Sullivan who fancies a trip to Mecca. <laughs> just in case you don't know, it's the honeybee that stings and not the bumblebee, although Phil got very badly stung last week. £25 for a bag of oregano. <laughs> the ever stylish David Ginola won the 1996 Hairstyle of the Year Award, whilst David Seaman here won the 1975 Hairstyle of the Year Award. <laughs> just last week. <laughs> And at the end of that round, Phil's team have four points and David's team have six. <laughs> Time for a special round now. Last week, ex-world heavyweight champion Mike Tyson announced that he is going to fight again in an attempt to solve his financial problems. Now, Iron Mike has earned an estimated $450 million in his career. But he's blown the lot and now owes in the region of $32 million. So to celebrate, we're going to play Mike Tyson's Debt Roulette. <laughs> when the wheel spins, the lights will stop opposite a sum of money. The team, knackered, I knackered. am knackered. <laughs> The teams then have to guess what old spendthrift Mike spent the money on, okay? So David's team, you can have first pick, okay? Let's spin the wheel. Hey, classy, isn't it? That's classy. Sit down, Nick, for God's sake. Okay. $230,000. Okay, have a guess for that one. What, what did he spend that on? Spend that on? Elocution <laughs> lessons. <laughs> I'll narrow it down for you. Okay, are they unpaid bills for aromatherapy treatment, mobile phones, or hairdressing? Tim, you've been in Dyson's ring, haven't you? Yeah. Yeah, I actually. <laughs> No, not quite like that. Yeah, I went in the ring with him over at uh, the Catskill Mountains. We tracked him down over there, and I actually went in the ring. He's quite frightening. He was awesome, and I, judging by the smell in the ring, it, it wasn't aromatherapy. <laughs> but that might have been me shitting myself. <laughs> How long was he in jail for? I think he was allowed one phone call before he went in, and he turned his phone and forgot to switch it off. And for four years, his phone's been on. <laughs> yeah, I'll give you a point for that. Well done, yes. In fact, he owes nearly a quarter of a million dollars for mobile phones and pagers. Okay, now, oh it's Phil's turn now. Let's have another luck, spin Phil. of the wheel. It's classy, isn't it? It's classy. I think it's $108,000. He donated it to a donkey sanctuary. No. <laughs> Okay, I'll, I'll narrow it down. Was it on a French chandelier, on dentistry, or buying a Bengal tiger? Oh, it's yeah. amazing he's had all at one stage or another in his life, hasn't he? Let's have an answer. Uh, tiger, you reckon? Yeah, we'll give you a point tiger. for that. Yeah. Yeah. It was money owed for Bengal tiger. Of course, in those days, it was hard to get hold of the tiger's favourite food, magicians. Okay, <laughs> time for more debt roulette. David, this one's yours. Off we go. Get quite to this. I'm going to build up. Yeah, 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 yeah. Debt Time for more debt roulette. <laughs> two and a half million dollars. <laughs> what can you buy for two and a half million dollars? Spurs first team, easy. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I think you've been over generous. <laughs> Is it um, owed to a New York art dealer for a Picasso? Was it run up on catering or is it a debt he owes to the nation of Islam? If it's a Picasso, it could be a self-portrait because yeah. the nose is over here. <laughs> 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 it's got to be. 
Absolutely. Sort of free. Is the correct answer one point? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Well done. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, the Jose whopping two and a half million dollars for food and drink down to having a mini bar in his cell. Okay, <laughs> next one. Phil's team, off we go. Let's play Tyson's Death Roulette. He's getting into it. I am. Nine million dollars! Nine million. David Seaman. <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> I'm going to narrow it down. Is it unpaid legal fees for his divorce, a down payment on an ocean going yacht, or antique jewellery? No, it was one giant gold tooth. <laughs> that he now lives in. <laughs> he wouldn't know that to yacht, would he? I think I probably... The, would the legal, 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 legal fees is correct for one point. Oh, well yeah. 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 Well done, yeah. Yeah. The answer is, indeed, legal fees, mind you, there were three letters. <laughs> <laughs> Mike Tyson's currently suing his ex-manager, Don King, for $100 million, but even if Tyson wins, Don gets half of it. <laughs> and at the end of that round, Phil's team have six points and David's team have eight. Field of Sportsman, Jonathan and Phil, you're up first this week, if you'd like That's to go right. and oh, take I'll your look. position. <laughs> Life holds on, please. Okay, can we have our first yes. mystery guest, please? Your time starts now. Don't let that go. Oh, no, the other one. <laughs> oh, my God. It's... Hold on. Please be careful. Yeah, what is that? <laughs> that hey, thing your missus has got in her drawer, isn't it? <laughs> got some hair here, but these days you can't oh, tell, can you? Jesus Christ. What, is it Wobby Savage? <laughs> what is that? It's like... No, it smells like a lady's hair. Is it? Is it Dave Seaman? Someone... <laughs> Hold it, I don't want to... Is it... Well, he or she is in very good nick. <laughs> it's a lady. Yeah, it's got a Easter on the by the way. <laughs> what the hell is this? Is it Eric Bristow's? <laughs> there is a string there. I know. It's a big old thong, and it? It's a firm Britain. <laughs> That's a quality bow. Is it a bow? Yeah, I could do it oh, a pint, yeah. actually. The old strong bow girl. I know the British archer, she's um, Alison something. Yes, Alison. Oh. Alison Rossi, Archer yeah. Lady. Mm. Alison. Uh, uh, Alison Williamson. Is it correct? Well, 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 well. Well. Okay, Rory and David, off you go to your positions. <laughs> Okay, blindfolds on. Okay, can we have our second mystery guest, please? <laughs> Your time starts now. That reaction, it can only be one person in St. John, is it? <laughs> Just be careful. Oh. What's this? Yeah, careful, careful. Oh, hello. Oh. It's a, it's a man eating a badger. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what you've got. I've got Pete Sanders' arse here. <laughs> oh. oh, my God. What's that? What's that? That's some bandage. That, that is, isn't it? That is. Is that the Martin Kiel yeah. being around? <laughs> <laughs> oh, blimey. <laughs> It's, it's, it's obviously a, yeah. is it a, it's a run, it's one of those 118, 118 boys falling around outside. Oh my God. It's that campaign. It, it's, a, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's, it's the bloke who ran, and the, the brilliant, heroic, um, it's Punjab. Punjab Singh! Punjab Singh! Right now! Man, I tell you what, he's 91 years of age and he runs all those marathons and he's a fantastic bloke. So the score to the end of that round of Phil's team with 9 points and David's team with 11.
We finish with the name game this week. Rory and Jonathan will be drawing the clues. The team in the lead goes first, which is obviously David's team. So I pass those across <laughs> to Rory, please. You're going to have to be drawing those clues, remember, Rory. So as many as you can get in the allotted time. Hey. Stop <laughs> sniffing the pens. <laughs> Your time stop now. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a literal representation. <laughs> What's the condom? Yeah, go on. It's a condom, yeah. Go on, condom. Oh, condom. <laughs> condom. Uh, yeah, it's a rugby player. <laughs> condom. <laughs> French. Come on, just think about, um, you know. Say what you see. English, say what you see. <laughs> condom. Come on, another, another name for a condom. Durex. No, and <laughs> Johnny Wilson. Thank God, crazy is here. Now this could be a tough one. This. Is that a glass of wine? No. <laughs> <laughs> Russian. Yeah, kick Ramovich. Yeah. First name. Ramovich. Oh. Roman. Roman. Very good. Okay. Do um, the last name first, please. No. <laughs> here we are. I oh, know. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, what's this one, Jimmy? Boing, <laughs> boing, oh! <laughs> Just think, um... <laughs> Come on, David, a, a horse-faced, um... <laughs> Bundy still right. <laughs> Golden drawing. Come on, it for you. You've got to move. That's my line. You've got to move. Hold on, I'm not going to watch. Don't watch. Start. All right, here we go. Now. What? What the hell? What the hell is that? Tin man. What is that bit? What's the key? That is the man. Boxer. Mike Tyson. Yeah, there you go. Go on, keep up. Right, here we go. Teeth. Dodgy teeth. Colin Jack, Colin Jack. Colin Jack, hold it, hold it. No, you're bird. You're, you're, oh, you're... Yana Pittman. No. Very church going one. He's, he's not a herd, lad. <laughs> when it's a... <laughs> Look, how many times he jumped in? So, oh, Jonathan Edwards. There you go, thank oh, you. Right. Okay. Oh, here we go. All right. He's got a UFC. Big nose. David Seaman. <laughs> All right, here we go. There's the goal post. And the footballer. And Wayne Rooney. And uh, ben Beckham. Beckham. David Seaman. Yeah. Oh, Beckham. Beckham. Sorry. David Beckham. Oh, yeah. Beckham. Beckham. <laughs> <laughs> no! Beckham. Yeah. So, Phil's team has 13, but this week's winner is David's team with 14. David, Rory and Jimmy, Phil, Jonathan and Ewan. My name's Nick Hancock. They think it's all over. It is now. Well and there's more next Tuesday at the later time. 10.35. Back to tonight, just 35 minutes away, here on BBC One. Comedy with the Crouches.